Hello, and welcome to The Psychonaut Show with Dr. J.K.B. This is John K. Burton, M.D., psychiatrist, psychoanalyst. And on this podcast, your captain on these voyages to explore strange new worlds in inner space. Our mission is to uncover knowledge that will ultimately make us more effective, more connected, and more attractive in our daily lives. In this episode, we are going to return to the concept of neutrality. And I thought that this world in our inner space was worth another visit because it is so important and also because I thought we would take a little bit of a subversive spin with it. Back in the first episode, I gave the other definition of a psychonaut. The definition that comes from the counterculture of the 60s, from Timothy Leary and Ram Das, the tune-in, turn-on, drop-out culture. The definition of a psychonaut then was someone who uses hallucinogens to expand their consciousness, to realize their oneness with the universe, and to transcend their attachment to the material world. And when I was thinking about whether it was okay to use that word for the title of this podcast, I was asking people of all different generations what their associations were to Psychonaut. And I was really surprised to find that the baby boomers that I asked didn't really know this definition, or at least the ones I asked didn't remember this definition, but a lot of millennials, and in fact, the generation that's just coming up that's younger than the millennials, and we don't actually know what they're going to be called, they knew about this definition. They knew about this idea of using hallucinogens to expand consciousness, not recreationally, but in a a sort of enlightenment pursuit kind of way. And Lately, a number of college students and uh, even a couple of high school students and some young adults have been telling me that they would like to use uh, hallucinogens, either uh, DMT, psilocybin, ayahuasca, uh, LSD, to, uh, to understand themselves so that they can clarify some of the conflicts that they're having. And they've been reading a lot about it. And in fact, there is in the larger society an increasing interest in this area among uh, certain groups. And I will say they have some valid sociopolitical points about how the history of how uh, hallucinogens were criminalized. Um, it was not only the counterculture back in the 60s, but scientific researchers too were looking at these substances and using them to understand how the mind and how the brain worked. And the Nixon administration actually uh, outlawed them unilaterally across the board and made them completely illegal so that even a lab couldn't have possession of them legally. And all research stopped at that point for decades. And recently, uh, there's been an increasing interest and some easing up of those old laws so that research has begun to progress again on this. There's a study at NYU looking at psilocybin in uh, terminal cancer patients. Now, it's not to treat their cancer, obviously. It's to see if it can help them in their mental state as they deal with these end-of-life issues. Another study that is from a long time ago, very interesting, looked at Harvard Divinity School students, some of whom were given on a a particular day, some were given, they they were all in the same hall, half were given uh, psilocybin and half were not, and that was decades ago, so we've been actually able to look at what happened to these people. And there's some really interesting differences between how they lived their lives, and not in destructive ways either. Some of you may know Joe Rogan. In the podcast, we started talking about psychedelics. And His podcast about- is almost always you know, number one or near number one on the iTunes most popular podcast. He's a huge proponent of using hallucinogens in this purpose and getting rid of that bad reputation that they had. Now, Joe Rogan is obviously not a scientist or a clinician, but he's a voice that um, people are familiar with and it's out there. 
And so back to my patients, they believe that it will help them achieve clarity in the conflicts that they're having and that it could be not just sort of recreational, more recreational drug use, not at all, but to help them with some of the struggles that they're having. The problem is the struggles that they're having are pretty significant and affect them in big time ways. They have anxiety disorders or mood issues, depression. Uh, many of them have problems with attention and ADHD, uh, sometimes a learning disability, uh, and definitely substance abuse itself can be a part of the picture with uh, using marijuana chronically or alcohol or other substances. And then the school function may be not good, trouble with academics and relationships, etc. So the standard psychiatric approach would be to strongly advise against this idea. And in fact, it wouldn't even be strongly advised against this as a treatment. It'd be like, this is not a treatment. This is just more self-destructive behavior. This is part of the problem and taking us down the wrong route, and we really need to stop that. And maybe we don't even need to bring in the standard psychiatric approach because I think maybe common sense would say this is not a good idea. But if we go back to the Testament of Neutrality, the first testament of the psychonaut, it tells me to suspend my opinion, even my informed medical opinion. It becomes, okay, let me hear about that. Not, this is a really bad idea, even when it actually does seem like a really bad idea. And I also want to add that it's not just what you say, but it is the mindset. In a way, neutrality invites us to exercise humility. I don't know the future. I don't know everything. So let me be humble and consider this, consider this idea of using hallucinogens to treat my psychiatric problems. And again, this is about exploring our inner world. I don't know the future. I don't know everything. So let me have an open mind, be neutral not bring in my prejudices, and let's think about all options, including the one that you're bringing to the table. Again, the testaments of the psychonaut neutrality is applicable to exploring our inner world. Right now, we're not taking action on any of this. We're simply thinking about it and looking about it. Neutrality is not applicable to all situations. But when we are exploring our inner worlds and... Uh, we're invoking the testament of neutrality, I can say, okay, maybe this option might be helpful. And we get to explore further. And then we're listening to one another. And then I can bring in ideas that I have. So I know that in Buddhism, there's this idea of no self. And that is really equivalent to enlightenment, which is equivalent to the counterculture idea of expanded consciousness. And in Buddhism, they say, you have to have a self before you can have a no self. And then I'm speaking in the same language and I'm actually in line with their goal of this, let me transcend these difficulties that I have and achieve enlightenment, expand my consciousness. But then we realize we have things that we need to take care of. We need to build a solid foundation upon which to then strive for that experience. And that allows us to wait focus on the things at hand, the anxiety, the ADHD, the depression, the pot, etc. And we're working together and we actually get somewhere. And that's how it's beneficial in terms of treatment, but it's also beneficial to both parties. For my part, I'm genuinely curious about this. I maybe might learn something. In fact, I have learned some things from talking to my patients and also other people I know who have gone on shamanistic journeys and other and had other experiences using these substances and found them beneficial. So I'll learn something too. Who knows? But the point of this is that neutrality gets us out of a stalemate and into a place of exploration and moving forward, even when it seems like there should be a very clear judgment about what the right thing to do is. That can wait while we're exploring the situation. So what's the lesson here? we can see once again that even when we're dealing with something that is potentially dangerous, someone making a decision that may be unhealthy for them, it still is important even more to remain neutral, to be non-judgmental, because that is the way that we begin to understand 
each other, understand our inner worlds, and have a step towards coming to a solution that is actually going to be constructive and healthy for everyone. This is Dr. JKB signing off. Since we are exploring together, you make the journey all the richer by subscribing to the show on iTunes. And even better if you also leave a rating, it helps others to find us. If you have a story about how the concept in this episode helped you figure out something in your life, send it in, please. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter at Psychonaut Show. Show notes are on the website, thepsychonautshow.com. And if you leave me a question, it may well be an inspiration for an upcoming episode. Until our next trip, judge nothing, question everything, and remember, there's always a reason. Bye for now. All the patient stories presented on The Psychonaut Show are created by me to illustrate an idea. Any resemblance to actual people is purely coincidental. The Psychonaut Show was created and produced by yours truly, John Burton. Art and web design by Hunter Creative. Post-production and sound design by Julio Gonzalez of Zimmer Media. Zimmer Media can be found online at zimmer.co. That's X-I-M-E-R dot C-O. 